Hi everyone, it's Mr. Banish, and in this podcast we're going to take a look at characteristics of stars. Have you ever looked up into the sky at night and noticed that certain stars kind of seem to fit together and make certain shapes? If you have, you have uh, saw something that is called a constellation. And uh, this is something that people for years and years and years have, uh, have been interested in. And in fact, some cultures have given them specific names. And um, it, what you're really looking at is a constellation, which is an imaginary pattern of stars. Even though they're not aligned certainly to make a shape, um, they, they seem to look that way. And so astronomers have used constellations to help locate objects within the night sky. They're able to say that it's uh, going to be north of the uh, Big Dipper or it's going to be just to the left of the Big Dipper. And um, so what I did is I, I took a couple of pictures um, from the internet that had uh, the Big Dipper and over here we had kind of like a Greek warrior and um, you can kind of see that even though these stars aren't intentionally lining up to make these shapes uh, they kind of look like it. This kind of looks like a um, big saucepan and this one looks like a Greek warrior if you were to um, minus the uh, the back setting there but just the stars kind of aligned to make uh, make a, a shape. And so constellations have, have always kind of fascinated people and uh, they use them as reference points for finding objects in the night sky. Uh, stars are basically classified by five things color, temperature, size, composition, and brightness. And what a star is, it's basically a huge sphere of glowing gas. And um, they're mostly made up out of hydrogen gas, and um, they, they produce this, uh, this nuclear fission. Um, the brightness comes through a process known as nuclear fission. I don't really need you to know what nuclear fission is right now, um, but understand that stars are made up out of hydrogen gas. And astronomers have um, put the, the characteristics together to help identify and classify them. So let's take a look at those a little bit closer. Color and temperature uh, help to reveal um, what the star's temperature is. So if we can look at the, the color of it, we can reveal that it has a high temperature or it has a low temperature or it's somewhere in the middle. Um, cooler stars tend to be a reddish color while our hottest stars are a bluish white color. Um, size is also another important uh, characteristic. Many si s uh, stars are about the size of the sun. Um, we always think of the sun as being this huge uh, star because of the fact that it's so important to us, but really the sun is considered a medium-sized star. Um, so there are, are many stars that are about the size of the sun. There are giant stars and super giant stars. Um, so there's stars that are even bigger than the sun. Uh, there are white dwarfs, which are about the size of the Earth, and then there are neutron stars, which are even smaller. So what we end up seeing is that stars come in all kinds of different sizes and, and, um, and colors and temperature, which is kind of interesting. Stars, as we had mentioned, are made up out of hydrogen. 73% of a star is hydrogen. About 25% is made up out of helium. Both hydrogen and helium are uh, elements that are found on the periodic table of elements. And scientists are able to use a device uh, called a spectrograph. And what it does is it breaks light into colors and produces an image of the resulting spectrum. And it's kind of a fancy way of saying basically inside a telescope uh, we can look and see that certain wavelengths uh, produce these lines that are, are on this uh, spectrograph and we're able to determine um, how, how uh, like kind of what it's made up out of and how much wavelength is accepting and not accepting. So chemical composition helps us also to classify stars, how much of the wavelengths are, uh, are being absorbed. Brightness of stars uh, depends on both the size and the temperature. Um, we, uh, we can determine how bright a star looks from Earth um, from both the distance and um, we, can, we can describe it in one of two ways. The first way is the apparent brightness um, or what we would consider how bright is it from Earth. And to determine the apparent brightness uh, we use an electronic device which basically tells us um, 
what what the brightness is and uh, there's also something that's considered absolute brightness and to get the absolute brightness what we have to do is first find the apparent brightness and then we have to um, also figure out what its distance from earth is and we combine those two together to give us our absolute brightness and um, the absolute brightness is the brightness the star would have if it were a standard distance from earth so brightness of stars are determined by apparent brightness and also absolute brightness. Um, to measure the distance to a star, um, it, it's such a long way away from Earth that we're not really able to use kilometers to, to help us. So what we use is something that's called a light year. And astronomers use a unit um, that is, as I had mentioned, light years. And it's basically uh, the distance between stars. We know that there are about 300,000 kilometers per second that a light year is away. Um, a light year is the distance that the light travels in one year, about 9.5 kilometers um, of distance. We also can use something that's called a parallax, which is the apparent change in position of an object when you look at it from different places. Um, the book talks about how if you went to a movie uh, and you had somebody that sat down in front of you that had a tall hat on. Now, if you and a friend were sitting behind that person, uh, that tall hat is going to block the, uh, the movie for you. And depending on where you're sitting, it's going to block different areas. But if you were to get up and move and go sit in a different spot, um, you would now be able to see the movie and it would almost be as if that person with the, the large, large hat had moved. But really that person hadn't moved, it's just the fact that you changed your position. And so the parallax is the apparent change in position of an object when you look at it from different places. So um, scientists use uh, different points of where Earth is located uh, to look at the, um, the different stars and to determine how far away it is. And so um, this gives us kind of that apparent change of position and we're able to determine the distance of a star. Uh, in the lab, you did a, um, a lab where you basically were plotting different uh, stars' locations based on their temperature and also their brightness. And what you were really doing is the work that was started by um, two scientists, Hertzsprung and Russell, and they came up with a diagram that's oftentimes re referred to as the HR diagram. They were basically um, plotting, just like you had done, the temperature and the absolute brightness and how they related. And what they did is they placed the temperature on the x-axis and on the y-axis they put the absolute brightness. And um, as they did this, they discovered that uh, there is a sequence as to where stars are located. Um, to start with, we know that there is 90% of our stars are found um, in a diagonal area going right across the middle. Uh, there are some very bright stars that are near the top and there are um, some that are not so bright which are going to be um, down towards the bottom. And so what they discovered is that stars basically organize themselves based on brightness and temperature. And so uh, they discovered this so we are able to now track and better understand how uh, stars change over time. And this is what the um, HR diagram looks like. You can see that um, there is this main sequence which has most of the stars, 90% of them, where they kind of fit into uh, this, uh, this um, brighter colors and then as you decrease the brightness you also um, start to see that there is an intense uh, temperature increase and over here we find our brightest and our warmest ones which are the supergiants. Um, the white dwarfs are obviously not as bright um, and they have uh, lower temperatures. So kind of interesting to see how we can um, organize and classify stars. So I hope this helps and thanks for watching.